Hey everybody, so we're gonna look at a building masses uh, Dynamo script. Uh, this is like an introduction to the to the actual script that will automate everything. This script, there's two manual processes. One's faster than the other one. But I'm gonna show you that because I think it'll give you an idea of the uh, other script uh, because there's a lot more involved with it. And so I'm gonna show you the script real quick. Um, so there's two parts. There's this one, uh, this part up here, and then there's this part down here. And we'll freeze one part and run the other one and then vice versa. But essentially this one up here uh, requires you to draw the lines of the building. Whereas this one down here requires you to just um, uh, place a room and then uh, place some room separation lines. And so I'll just jump back into the Revit file and show you. And real quick, so the reason why we, we created this script or the, the larger script that automates things is that uh, it, we have a lot of files or these site files with a lot of buildings and, and a lot of links. And those links need to be simplified to just masses so that we can do other things with it. And this is a way to approach that. Um, there's things or some some roadblocks we ran into like uh, the fact that when you bring geometry into families it'll create like a, a mass from an SAT file which you can only just push and pull and it's very limited and you can't edit it so in the later script I'll show you actually how to create a native extrusion in a family but this is just a basic look um, at some of those steps so anyways, um, we have a variety of different buildings here, and I guess we'll just start off by looking at the first one. So this one requires create room by model line. So we'll do, we'll select model lines, and then what it'll do is just filter out based off of your selection and figure out where the model lines are, and then that'll create, or we'll get the curves from that, we'll flatten it, um, and then we'll, we'll get a nice, um, uh, a nice group of curves based off of you know how those curves were, were drawn so if there was multiple buildings it should this uh, node should group uh, them appropriately um, and real quick since we're on that node I want to show you we do have one package Archilab package uh, and it's this node here there may be others that I can't remember um, but just make sure to have that package and you can use this script um, so this list count here, all, all we're doing there is figuring out there's multiple uh, groups. And if there is, we'll, that'll tie into this if statement over here, which all, it, all that does is determines what the solid geometry is. Because if it is multiple uh, buildings, then we'll need to do solid by union uh, to join that into one solid which we'll bring into this family. Because if we don't, what will happen is it'll go through and it'll create a family for the first building maybe in that link and then go to the next one. And then and then whatever the last one is, is the latest family in your project and you're missing all the other buildings inside that link. And so this will go in after it groups the curves, it'll uh, join it as a poly curve we'll get a surface from that and then um, we'll just add a surface thickness and then um, like I mentioned it'll go through that if statement if it is a single building in that link then it'll pass through um, the first input into the solid geometry and then create the family currently you can see the family is a mass and then um, the material sets to default and it's pointed to the generic model um, RFT which you'll find in the link below um, so definitely check that out if you want to run this exactly how I have it and there's this part of the script as well and this is a way to get around branching if you run into that issue or at least is, this is what I found uh, to work so I can get the curve start points and then I can get the uh, point prune duplicates and this will just get rid of the duplicate points that could potentially be causing branching. And in, in this example, um, that is what is causing branching. I'll show you a, a specific example where it does branch and this kind of fixes it. Um, and then 
this uh, polycurve dot by points just creates our, our polycurve and then we have our surface by patch just like we do down here and we would just plug this into the surface but we'll look at some examples before we do that and in the official script it'll just figure that stuff out by itself it'll say okay if it doesn't work this way then we'll try a different way and so I'm gonna pull Dynamo over and we'll just look at a specific example of this so like say um, we're just gonna draw lines and there's already some lines here and we want to create an extrusion of that link and so all we got to do is click on that change here so select model lines we'll just click on the change and then do a um, selection box around the link and where we drew our lines in the lines I just want to point that out so if you just do um, li uh, for line or you can jump into the architecture tab and click on model line and just draw those lines so that's all I did I just drew the outline of this building so okay now if we run it what it'll do is it'll go through create the geometry and you can see it had no problem with that there was no branching so it passed through everything and then if we look at the model um, over here in the project browser there's a mass drop down now and then we have this mass in the project now getting a like insertion point so that family the insertion point is always like down it's the furthest in the X direction so the geometry itself so in this case this is our geometry so it's whatever the geometry is it's the furthest in the in the uh, Y direction and then the furthest in the X direction of um, of the point or of the geometry and or the it's the negative X direction in the negative Y direction is the uh, and then if you can figure that out you can figure out the insertion point uh, in this case we aren't placing it automatically but that will happen in the uh, the full script so we'll dive into that but for now this brings it in into the project browser you can drag it into the project and, and place it wherever and so now let's look at the other workflow real quick and this one's pretty simple and we'll freeze this and we'll come back to this in a second and we'll unfreeze this one and I'll show you real quick how this is this is kinda um, what this needs so it needs a room as an input and to get this room we'll need to make sure that the Revit link is set to room bounding so just select on the link go to room bounding if you're using this example file you can just uh, it should be set to that already um, so room bounding is checked and then we would draw some room separation lines which on the architecture tab uh, on or actually yeah on the architecture tab on the room and area panel you'll find room separator and just click on that and then you can draw your room separation lines and then with those placed and the link set to room bounding we can place the room and then with that place we can just get the uh, geometry of that room and then do the inverse uh, of that onto another piece of geometry and to show you that we have uh, this node that that uh, requires the room uh, currently it's already got the room selected it'll get the element geometry which is that room and then it, it does a geometry bounding box and then to a cuboid so that makes a solid and then it just does solid dot difference uh, so it just it reverses it and then you have the opposite um, solid pretty much of that room now if we just run this we can see the geometry pop up in the background So there's the geometry. And now if we pull that over and then look at room mass, we can pull that in and you can see it lines up. 
Now, a real quick look at branching, and then I want to show you, uh, well, first, let me show you this one. And, so, and uh, so, essentially, this would be like having two buildings on one site, so you trace over both of them, and, or two buildings in, like, one link. And so, if I bring this over, we can freeze this part of it, go up here unfreeze this and then I'm gonna bring this back over and click on change select on these bring this back um, the only thing that this really does when we we have two separate groups of curves is this here will check the the count pretty much and it'll figure out okay we have two curves or two groups of curves if that's if that's the case then uh, it won't equal one it'll be false and then it'll give this uh, input 2 as the output which is input 2 is just um, com essentially combining those two solids into one so that we can only pass one into this node over here And so I'll go ahead and run this it'll replace that original family since I didn't rename it so if we go back here, you can see the outline of the building. And if we click on this, you can see the building. So one more thing I want to show you is branching. And what we'll do is just select those curves or lines. I'm not going to change anything. I'll just show you what happens when it errors out. So you can see our... our um, curves back there and then you can see that these have aired out and you can see poly curve maybe branching um, to get around that uh, I've done this it's not like foolproof it's not the perfect solution there may be a better way I'm open to, to hearing that um, but this is the way that I found uh, for now is to get the start points uh, prune out the ones that are uh, duplicates and then create another poly curve and then do a surface and you can see it's not perfect because the shape is incorrect and it'll be a little bit clearer after we run this so if I click run you'll see that the surface thicken um, isn't yellow anymore neither are the other ones and you can see the shape in the background and you can see it doesn't match the the actual curves from the lines and since I again since I didn't rename that it's gonna come in as model lines 2 and then you can see it right here and you can see the issue that it has um, now I ha I'm not entirely sure how to get around that just because there's different ways that things could potentially be modeled and like in this case I know that instead of pruning the last point I should prune the first point to prevent this issue um, but there's you know there's a variety of different things that could impact uh, the way that these masses are created we'll dive into ways to get around that in the full script but for now I think this is a good uh, look at some of the possibilities with this script and some of the different methods on handling the geometry but anyways let me know if you have any questions um, or any issues with the script. Again, you'll find below in the description a OneDrive link uh, where you'll find a variety of folders from other videos where you can download the video, um, the Dynamo script, the uh, links, and depending on the video, you could download you know it, whatever the documents are. Uh, so definitely check those out. Let me know if you have any any trouble. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.